Hello everyone and welcome to my walkthrough of Kirby's Return to Dreamland. As you've seen in the intro, Maglor lost all 120 of his energy spheres as well as 5 of his ship parts. And I intend on getting every single one of those suckers back in this 100% walkthrough. So let's get this started with awesome music! Okay, that's enough of that. This game's got awesome gameplay as well, and that's why I'm doing a walkthrough on it. Controls, two button, jump, one button, inhale, shake the Wii Remote to get more suction power, Kirby is the world's greatest living vacuum, and of course the directional pad to move. Right to go right, left to go left, down to duck, up to, well, you can aim certain powers up, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Double tap in one direction to run, and that's quite handy. Alright, let's start the stage. As you see, there's a little bubble above the stage. That tells you how many energy spheres are in this stage. In this case, there are three of them. You can have players jump in at any time, but this is going to be a completely solo run by me as usual. I am going to destroy this game, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, this game explains the controls to you quite nicely through these little visual cues here. You just press, whoa, oh, and then you press the one again to spit back out a little star, and then the sign is quite happy. And Waddle Dee, however, is not, though. So, this is like the intro stage of sorts. Kirby, he's got some awesome stomach acid. Just check this out. You just inhale an enemy that has a certain power, and then you press down, and then you absorb that power. I mean, jeez, he just gets the nutrients right into his bones, and as well as the weapons. And uh, I'm not going to really explain the controls for all of these powers. There's so many powers in this game that it would be ludicrous to explain it all. So I'll just say pause the game with the plus button and then look through these menus to see uh, whatever powers your power yields you, so to speak. Oh, that was the cutter power, actually. I should actually show, show that off. Um, you can also lose your power by pressing the minus button like that, suck it back in as it's moving away to reabsorb it, but that's not what I want to do. What I want is Mr. Cutter here, which is actually Sir Kibble. And now we got the cutter power, it's pretty neato, we got ourselves a boomerang blade, it is awesome, and let's just continue on through this stage, I'll show all the powers as I go. Hey, I already showed how to run before, I don't have to show that again. <laughs> Curse you tutorial signs. Maybe I shouldn't have shown that just yet. Oh yeah, and if you press the jump button in midair, you'll float. So I guess I didn't show that yet, but that would have came with instinct anyway. Um, there's these stars that you can find along the stage. Collecting a hundred of them will give you an extra life. Food will cover your energy at the bottom left corner. You run out of energy, you die. That's pretty simple stuff for gaming if you've ever played a game before. <laughs> Um, this is something that not a lot of games have, actually, is the ability to fall through floors by holding down on the D-pad. Like a lot of games, such as Mario, you just go through one, then you can't always go back down through them like that. But in Curry games, you can! Anyway, here's a key, and when you're holding an item, you can't attack or do anything. And here's our first energy sphere. Wah! Woohoo! That's one of three and goes right to the upper left corner. You can tell which ones you've already collected by their order, basically. Uh, it's it's kind of handy in that you can like tell the general area of where an energy sphere might be by where, um, like the, between each area there are, um, how do I put it? Like there, like those energy spheres at the upper left corner, they are in the order that you find them. So if you ever miss one, you'll know the area, well, sort of the area, 
that you'll need to search for an energy sphere that you don't have. Anyway, these gray blocks, you have to shake the Wii Remote as you're sucking in to suck them up. And the more you suck up at one time, the larger that star gets and the more destructive it is. It's also strangely slower the larger it gets. Maybe it just gains a lot of weight and just becomes naturally a slow star or something like that. And also in this Kirby game, there's a new thing called Ultra Powers. And this is the first instance of it. The Ultra Sword! And you'll see that there's certain things that have stars on them, like these ground blocks here. Just use your power on them, and you can break them. Whatever Ultra Power you have, you can use it to break these suckers. And these are well set up, so you don't have to worry about not having the right power at the right time. In fact, I'm pretty sure all the uh, stages are like self-contained in that you know you need the. I mean, they give you all the powers you need to 100% each stage as you as you go, which is great game design. Hey, that wasn't even sharp. <laughs> it was like a blunt hitting object, but I suppose it did the damage it needed to do. Ooh, meat cleaver, awesome sauce, and in here, something new. Portal to a different dimension! And I'll just destroy the rest of the blocks for the heck of it. Uh, whenever you enter one of these portals, uh, it strips you of your power, but that doesn't really matter anyway because we won't need it in there. Um, by the way, these Ultra Powers only last for a certain amount of time, as you can see by that uh, little gauge down there slowly depleting. Anyway, let's jump into the portal. Now you notice we're in this spooky black and white area. This purple wall here it doesn't actually kill you, but it will kill you if it squishes you, but it won't kill you directly, so to speak. So that wall sort of puts the pressure on you to uh, keep moving forward and clear the way. Uh, you're basically stuck using basic Kirby powers in this black and white area, which is the gimmick of these portal areas, and dear lord, I love the music in these places. It, it sounds so Kirby 64-ish and just so like mystical at the same time. I don't know, I just really love this song. Come to think of it, this whole game soundtrack is phenomenal and I, oh, you know how much I love game music. And once, oh, you can also shoot things at that wall to push it back. I forgot to show you that as well. Uh, press up to enter doors and we are at the boss. The boss of these black and white areas are always a thing known as a sphere doomer. Um, I already showed the sword power-up, so I don't really have to show that again, so, but I am going to show you the fire power-up, just because I have it, so here we go! And this one's got two energy spheres, which is kind of odd, actually, I always found, because usually, you know, things... Oh, that was really bad. I wanted to do, a, a, like, a, a charge, yeah, that sort of thing, to do my old fireball right into him, like that. I am doing terrible here, and this is not a hard boss in the slightest. He just sort of charges at you and shoots things, and that's pretty much all it can do. I suppose it's got this weird, like, super fast teleport thingy as well, but all of his attacks are very, very predictable, so you don't really have to worry too much about him, and as it should be, I mean, it is the first boss of the game. And I don't know why I decided to remove my power there. <laughs> And there's always a maximum tomato at the end of those uh, black and white segments as well as... And it also resaturates the place with color once you defeat them, so maybe like, they, like, take all the energy away from the place or something like that. Anyway, this is the end of the stage right here, is these super glowy doors, and we also got this minigame. Press the 2 button at the very bottom of that springy thing to get as high as you possibly can and get as many stars as you possibly can. Yes, this is the same minigame that I never was able to get the one on my Kirby's Nightmare and Dreamland walkthrough. Arrgh! And I highly doubt I'll be able to get it again. <laughs> anyway, stage one is 100% so let's go over to stage two and see what new design aspects come our way, like these leaf power enemies. I really love this power, it's just so graceful and like Flurryish. It's very versatile too. Just very, very neat. <laughs> it's it's like you can charge with it. You can shoot with it. It's quite awesome, I think. Well, at least that's what I think. It's people's preference, really, with Kirby powers. I'll, I intend on showing them all off as they come, if I unless I miss something accidentally. And these are warp stars. You just jump at them. You'll automatically grab onto them to transport yourself to the next area. They're always done quite the a spectacular fashion, cutscene style. Woo! F 
Fantastic. Alright, let's keep going. What's over here? Aha! I would have missed those stars otherwise. Then again, I'm not really worried about missing stars in the slightest. This game gives you a lot of lives. Cutter power. Oh, wait, I should have kept the leaves. Oh, poopers. I wanted to play around with the leaves some more, actually. I just instinctively jumped for the cutter. But then again, I could actually show you this as long as I have the cutter. Uh, strings, ropes, and webs such as this can be cut with the cutter power and the enemies killed via it, so that's a pretty handy thing to have as well. I probably actually needed something like that. Then again, I believe our uh, leaf power gives us a razor leaf Pokemon-like power of sorts. Uh, anyway, so I would be able to cut things with those leaves, so I guess it doesn't really matter in the long run. And that's what you can do with the uh, leaf power, is be able to cut these platforms. Sometimes these platforms um, conceal stuff like these stars or energy spheres in the future. Um, Actually, I thought, am I missing an energy sphere? It really feels like... I don't know why I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's also... There's also a new kind of thing in this Kirby game where you can pick up things and actually use them to your advantage. Like, this is a, a little cannon, and it shoots at a regular rate that pretty much destroys everything as long as you keep moving forward at a even rate as well. So you don't really have to worry about things, just jump wherever needed, and, like, there's a nice switch... Uh, co covered up by those metal blocks, which are easily destroyed by this cannon, as is the thing covering the energy sphere, well, those blocks covering the energy sphere. Now, now which one is that? Oh, that is the first one. Okay, I guess I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so, now we're at the tree light. Oh, needle power, I can show this one. It's. I don't think it's really all that useful, unless you're like... Like, enemies are falling on top of you, uh, and you can also use it to ram into enemies like that. But still, it's, I don't really find it all that good, but that's my personal preference. Even though it is like a unlimited shield sort of dealio thingy, you get what I mean as you see what I'm doing right here. Oh, and as you also seen, the items that, like, like that can in there, run out of power after t a few, uh, like a minute or so. Oh, there's a secret in here. Uh, ooh, it's a s invincible candy awesomeness. We got even more awesome music! This is a really classic tune, too, here. It's been around since the very first Kirby game, I believe. You can use it, to, I mean, use your invincibility to kill enemies, and there's another energy sphere up here. I don't know how I missed this energy sphere before. Like, I went through the stage two times, and somehow I managed to miss that energy sphere the first two times, and then on the third try, I managed to get it. Oh, beam power, I can show this one off. Uh, it's got a neato charge thing if you hold the one button to use its power. Uh, you can also just do normal energy blast like that. Running while doing that will also do, will do stuff like that. It's, it's really, really versatile. And this is a gigant edge. I guess it's a gigantic edge referring to its blade. It's not a hard boss in the slightest because it's so freaking slow. <laughs> it's just kind of wanders around really, really slowly. It's got that shockwave, but even that thing's slow. I mean, you would think a shockwave would be a lot faster. I mean, a shockwave is caused by an amount of force, which is, you know, something that's typically quick. Uh, also, a general rule with Kirby games is whenever you defeat a boss, steal its power because you'll likely need it. <laughs> As you see, I needed it to cut that rope, to free that. Oh, and you would have gotten squished if you uh, f got underneath that metal platform and got killed instantly. Uh, I did that before on one stage. Don't do that. <laughs> Learn by my mistakes. Anyway, goal game! Yeah! Oh, I got a little further that time. Do the Kirby! It's not a Kirby game without that dance. And that's all I think I'm going to be doing in this part. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when we start Stage 3 of World 1.